Welcome to Lesson 1-9. I can solve simple addition and subtraction equations. Please follow along, take notes, pause when you need to. Looking at 1-9, we are going to have some properties and things to add to our vocabulary. This is subtraction property of equality. What it means is exactly what it says, is that if you subtract the same number from each side of an equation, equality, the two sides remain equal. So if I subtract, if I have 7 equals 7 here, and I subtract 3 from 7 on the left and 3 from 7 on the right, I end with 4 equals 4. Same thing with algebra. If I have x plus 4 equals 6, if I take 4 away from this side, I must also take 4 away from this side, and we will remain equivalent. This is going to help us find out an unknown variable. So the first thing you're going to do, and you want to make sure you write these down, first thing you want to do when you're solving an equation is, I'm going to rewrite my equation, first of all. x plus 5 is equal to 3. I'm really saying, what number plus 5 equals 3? So I make my train tracks. The goal is to isolate the variable. Try to get the variable alone and find out what is x alone. So since I'm adding 5 right here, I want to do the inverse operation and subtract 5. Because I'm trying to get x alone, 5 minus 5 is 0, and I'm just left with x. Since I subtracted 5 on the left, I need to do that on the right, and this is 3 minus 5, which we know I can add the opposite. I have more negatives than positives. How many more? Keep the negative sign. 5 minus 3 is 2 important thing to do is check your solution. If I forgot the negative sign and tried to plug in x, just 2, you don't have to write this part down, I would have got 2 plus 5 equals 3. 7 equals 3. That's not true. So I know that 2 isn't the answer. So when I realize, oh, I need that negative, I can try again. I plug in x for where x goes. Negative 2 plus 5 is equal to 3. Negative 2 plus 5, more positives than negatives. 5 is 3 more than 2. So since it works out, my solution is correct. So it's all about the inverse operation. Okay, so we're undoing what's been done. So if I have a and I add 6 and I get to 2, I want to say, what did I have with a before I added 6? So I do my inverse operation what operation undoes adding that's subtraction so I subtract 6 because I want 6 minus 6 is 0 to get my variable a alone whatever I do to one side I have to do the other 2 minus 6 is negative 4 and I know that because 2 minus 6 add the opposite follow the same addition rules check my solution Negative 4 plus 6 equals 2. More positives than negatives, 6 is 2 more than 4. So my solution is true. Try the other two and check back in. Make your slide. That's to show the equality thing. Whatever happens on one side happens on the other. Take 3 away. 3 minus 3 is 0, so I'm left with just y. Negative 8 minus 3, I'm going to do a little work over here. Add the opposite. Two negatives, I'm getting more negative. 8 plus 3 is 11. Check my solution. Negative 11 plus 3 is equal to negative 8. More negatives and positives. 11 minus 3. So since they match, my solution works. I'm adding 4, so I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides. Bring down my n, 5 minus 4 is 1. I'm going to want to rewrite this variable first. N, mine, n is equal to 1. Plug it back in and check. So again, I just said addition and subtraction are called inverse operations because they undo each other. For this reason, you can use the addition property of equality to solve subtraction equations like this. What that means is just like the addition 
prop the subtraction property of equality, if I add the same number to each side of the equation, the two sides remain equal. Add 3, I get to 10. Add 3, still get to 10. Put 5 on there, I get x alone. Put 5 over here, I get to 11. Whatever happens on one side happens to the other. So another example. This word problem says two angles are supplementary if the sum of their measures is 180. The two angles shown are supplementary. So it says this angle and this angle are supplementary, meaning they add to 190. So we want to write an equation to find the measure of angle x. So I continue, and I'm going to set this up. Okay, so the sum of the measures is 180. That's what I know. Let x represent the value of the angle. And so I say, okay, the sum of a number I don't know and 94 is 180. I set that up to solve, make my tracks. Do the inverse. Well, without that 94, how much measurement is needed? So the remaining angle is 86 degrees. You can plug it back in to check. Another word problem. You can try it. Pause and come back. A novel is ranked 7th on the bestseller list. This, this is a change of negative 8 from its position last week. Write and solve an equation to determine the novel's ranking last week. I saw the word is. This, they were talking about this same thing. So it said 7 is a negative 8 change from the position last week. Or, I like to think of it as 7 is the position last week going down 8. That's what I like better. So then I make the train tracks. Say, okay, put those 8 positions that it went down back on. And it was at the 15th position last week. Check my answer. 7 is equal to the 15th place going down 8 places. That will get me to the 7th place. So my solution, x is 15, is correct. Scroll all the way back to the bottom. All right, solving a subtraction problem. Okay. Position of the variable. Notice on this one, you could flip around the equal sign and write it like y minus 7 equals negative 6. No, notice nothing changed position on either side of the equal sign. We just kind of flipped it around and mirrored it because we want to write our variable on the left. But I can solve it this way too and change it later. So what's happening? Y is, being, is taking 7 away from Y to get to negative 6. So I'm going to add and put 7 back on. And I have negative 6 plus 7. More positives than negatives. One more. So I get y equals 1, which I'd write y equals 1. And I can plug that in check. Negative 6 is equal to 1 minus 7. Add the opposite. Negative 6 is equal to negative 6. Please remember, you should not be chasing to write down what I'm writing down. You should be either trying it on your own and then stopping and listening or watching and listening and then trying to do it on your own. Okay, no chasing. It's not going to help you. Try these and come back. Remember inverse operation. The slide keeps me organized. So x minus 8 is negative 3, so I'm going to put that 8 back on. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0, and I want x alone. Add 8 on the other side. Negative 3 plus 8. More positives than negatives. 8 is 5 more then 3. Plug it in and check. 5 minus 8 should be negative 3. Add the opposite. More negatives. 3 more. My solution works. So make sure you work up on these integer th rules too. Make your tracks. Undo subtracting 4 by adding 4. That's a plus. <laughs> and then I get negative 4 plus 4 is 0 b is equal to, I have a negative 10 plus 4, more negatives than positives, 10 is 6 more than 4. 
So negative 6 minus 4 should be negative 10. Add the opposite. 2 negatives is negative 10 is equal to negative 10. So it works. Last one. Train tracks. P is being, you're taking 12 away from P to get to 7. So let's put the 12 back on to find out what P was before you took it away. You end up with P is equal to 19, or P is equal to 19. Double check. 7 is 19 minus 12, and that's true. Solution works. Big things to remember, ladies and gentlemen, inverse operations. Undo what's been done to find your variable. Good luck. See you soon.